Coming up on your favorite podcast, Zach drops by. It's late on a Sunday night. Zach and I haven't really chatted on the pod in a while. And we've got a list of things we'd like to talk about, a potpourri, if you will. So we're kind of using this as an opportunity to kind of wrap up the week, wrap up the last couple of weeks, maybe throw some takes out there that we haven't had a chance to talk about before, sort of emptying the notebook, if you will. So it's a little potpourri pod. It's Zach. It's me. And it's coming up next right here on the pod. Hey, it's the Tim Anderson Podcast. I'm Tim. And joining me tonight, first time since the draft. So it's been over a month. Uh, joined by our resident coach, football expert, and just all around sports fan, Zach Neighbor joins the pod. Zach, good to have you again, bud. It's uh, it's good to be back, Tim. It's it's been a while, but it's nice to be back on your show. It's right where you belong, sir. You, me, just kind of gabbing away on a night. You and I haven't had a chance to chat much. Uh, just you and I, because we've been doing heavy football stuff, and we haven't had a chance to really chat baseball or anything like that. So we're going to kick a lot of stuff around here over probably the next hour, because I call this kind of a potpourri pod. You and I have a whole bunch of opinions kind of circulating out, and this week I felt like some of the traditions of sports have been challenged a little bit, and I think it gives us a chance to talk about some of those things. Uh, But before we get to all of that, I got to ask you, because I was just watching the biography of Mick Foley, and they just ran back the 98 uh, King of the Ring, Hell in the Cell. Uh, They talked about all the behind the scenes of that. Uh, Where does the Hell in the Cell 1998 taker versus mankind rank in the pantheon of pro wrestling moments? You know, it's, it's a hard one for me because I, it, it definitely is an iconic moment and um, something that like, you know, if you're sitting down with someone who hasn't watched before, like it should be mentioned um, or seen at some point, but it's also not like, I mean, it's not what pro wrestling is. Right. So it, it's hard to, to, to get someone like, I think they need some context before watching it to understand really what, how astounding it was. I just remember I show it to kids, like whoever, whoever, anytime a, a student challenges me about how fake pro wrestling is, that's always the go-to, right? When you're like, you know what? There are some things about pro wrestling that can't be faked. And this is an example of that. Oh, for sure. And my, my dad will come back to that is like, you know, the last time you went to the movie theater, that was all fake too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like <laughs> those, that guy didn't really shoot, he shoot a bunch of people. Uh, you know, Batman isn't really chasing the Joker around Gotham. What? Are you serious? You know, it, it's, it's all for entertainment purposes. <laughs> You're absolutely right about that, that it isn't like, it's not wrestling per se. Right. But it is like, I think it is like the moment of the, it's like one of the three attitude era moments that I think you point to and you're like, Oh, that was the, that was a holy crap moment for, you know, I mean, not maybe pro wrestling, but certainly it, it, it was, it's, it's one of those, right? It's just, it's a moment that gives me goosebumps every time I watch it. The JR call, the meet the, the second one is the scary one because that's not the one that they planned. Like right. they planned the, the the scary one is the one they planned, and the other one is the one they didn't plan, and that's the even scarier one. Well, and I, what I do love about that is when the first one happens, uh, Jr. is like apologizing to everyone that Foley's getting wheeled out of there, and you know we're gonna miss out on this great match. Like he he's apologetic, <laughs> and it's like in the moment you're like, you know what, uh, kind of a big deal. Yeah. It's like we didn't need to and, – and I was – when I watched it, I, I remember just going, dude, I'm way more concerned about other things. Like that guy just fell off the top of the cage. I don't need to see anything more. I need – nothing more needs to be seen, and yet we got 20 more minutes. That's the thing that's incredible about it. Oh, for sure. Oh, so I, yeah, I, I had to share that with you right at the beginning because that biography was on tonight. And overall, those series have been okay. Uh, a little bit of a whitewashing of the Ultimate Warrior's career. Uh, it's really weird how his career has gone from like, you know, like he was the most hated guy in wrestling to all of a sudden the WWE is giving an award in his honor every year. It's just weird. I don't know. It's weird. But if you haven't watched those yet, I encourage you to do so because some of those are pretty darn good. 
Uh, yeah, I've heard they're really good. Yeah, and we'll get into more of that. We'll get a, we'll get some top rope radio going here at some point. But uh, there was so much happening this week, as I mentioned, Zach. Like so much in the news um, that feels like it challenges conventional thinking. And the first one happened actually today. And I know this is something that you wanted to talk about. So preempted television coverage of a sporting event. Set the scene for today, and then let's talk about your feelings about when is it time to switch over? When is a network obligated to stay put? Yeah, I just I thought it was wild today. So we had um, NCAA college softball on ESPN, and you're in on that, and, I, and I'm in on that. I you know, and obviously, like I coach softball, so I'm going to have some uh, some bias there. <clears throat> but I do think it's a great sport. If you haven't checked it out, if you haven't watched it, like if you're if you're into baseball, you will enjoy fast pitch softball because it's it's everything. It, it fixes most everything that people complain about baseball now. Right? It's faster paced. Um, the ball's put in play more. It's not just home runs and strikeouts and walks. But anyway, so so hundred uh, percent. We've got James Madison is playing Missouri. And the winner goes to the College World Series. And the game is in, like, the sixth inning. And we we hit the time when the men's national soccer team is supposed to play. And um, this it seemed like Twitter was going wild that the soccer game wasn't coming on. You know, the soccer game was bumped to ESPN3, which is basically just on the app. Um, and I, I just, you know, and I, and I had... The soccer game is a, a friendly, which, to my understanding and my limited knowledge of soccer, is the equivalent of a scrimmage, right? It doesn't count for anything. It's pretty much so. Right. I, I just I I didn't understand all the uproar today about it. I'm kind of there too, especially since the U.S. men's team hasn't even qualified for the Olympics. Like they're kind of irrelevant right now. Like uh, not right. not, not, not even a watch, not even <laughs> worth a watch at this point. Right, and that's where it's, you know people were complaining about it, and I was just like, I mean, you know, I'm like the game doesn't even matter, right? They're not playing in the Olympics. It's a, a friendly, which is just like, hey, like, like let's get together and play and work on some stuff. Um, like, why, why should that get more coverage than something else? And I, I get, you know, people are like, well, it's a national team, and I heard a couple of people say, you know, things like, well, this is why the sport struggles so much. It just gets no respect. And I'm like, um, how about you earn a little bit of respect? Right. Like how about, how about you, you do something that makes people want to watch, you yeah. know, or, or make it must see TV. I, like, I don't know. I it the just, US it, it women really make a better case than the men. Yeah. The to U- see all of it. Yeah. I mean, the U S women make a better case to be watched than the guys are. I mean, the U.S. women are at least relevant as a soccer program. Like, uh, men are not relevant to watch. The men, the men stink. Men are one of the yeah. – they're, they're like the 30th-ranked program in the world. They're, they they stink. They're not that good at soccer. Well, and then, you know, I was I was stirring the pot a little bit and said, uh, you know, I asked I asked who won the, won the <laughs> soccer practice today. <laughs> and it should be noted that the U.S. team lost – their soccer practice today. So <laughs> it's a tough loss. That's going to be really hard to swallow. Those orange wedges don't taste as good after a practice loss. Yeah. That's I believe, I believe it was to Switzerland. <laughs> and that's the, that's a big power in soccer. You've heard a lot about the Swiss legacy in the world cup. Haven't you? I mean, everybody talks about it. No, no. <laughs> well, Tim, Tim, what's the best part of Switzerland? <laughs> uh, I'm going to assume the chocolate. I, I I don't know, but the flag is a big plus. That's a <laughs> the dad there's jokes your, are good. They're rolling in the you day. right now. That's really good. See, I'm not a dad. I don't have those jokes that you do. <laughs> I, I maybe I need to because I don't have the material. That's I'm with you on this though because I think it's one of two things, right? If, if they did cut away, what would be the other outcome? You're not paying Maybe. attention to women's college sports. This is right. why women's college sports doesn't get any love. This is why we don't, you know, this is why these sports don't generate revenue. It's because you're moving to games that don't matter just because men are playing it. Yeah. And, and I, I will say this, like softball is a growing sport. Um, it's you know, it's they, a great watch on TV. It's a great watch on TV. I love they, watching fast pitch softball. It's fantastic on TV. They, they started the, uh, 
the new league last year, the Athletes Unlimited League, um, which which was getting you know a lot of views and and it was perfect, right? It started. Um, it, it starts up right after the college season ends. So you get all these great college games. Um, and then it, and it leads into that season. And it's, it's like I said, it, if you like baseball, it, it solves a lot of the problems that people are complaining about with baseball right now. I completely and you're agree. still getting, you're still getting a lot of the action, the home runs, you know, I mean, the Oklahoma team is unbelievable. They've hit, like 150 home runs in 50 games um, and have hit just a, you know, like I think they've hit a home run in like 49 of 51 games or something at this point. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm 100% in. I can't wait for the uh, the College World Series for fast pitch. I'm excited to watch it. Uh, it it's great stuff. And uh, I'm, I agree with you on the baseball thing. In fact, this might be a good time to ask you this because I just listened to Theo Epstein sit with Bill Simmons for like 40 minutes on his podcast, and they were talking about fixing baseball. And I think the thing that they kept coming back to when they – I guess Theo Epstein has been doing all this research and studying. They're like, when is baseball at its best? When the ball's in play? When things are happening quickly? When It's not even about pace of play. It's just about pitches coming in quicker. It's just about the ball getting put in play a little bit more. More doubles, more triples – less strikeouts. And if you look at the statistics now, they say strikeouts have never been higher, triples never been lower, doubles never been lower, at least not in the last 40, 50 years. So I guess I pose this question to you. Uh, You being a baseball guy and a softball coach, what are some things Major League Baseball could learn from a fast pitch softball or from itself that to maybe improve some of this? Well, I, there is, there is a pace to it. Um, you know, I even I've, I've got Florida and Georgia on right now. They played earlier today, but it's re-airing. Um, there is not a lot of time between pitches. I, I think that, you know, like we said, like there's just more balls in play and I'm, and I'm wondering at what point baseball kind of starts to flip back, right? Like we've gotten to these, um, you know, launch angle, home runs, um, the analytics side of the things. And I think we're missing out on a lot of stuff. And, it, you know, it brings me to a good stat I saw. So a, a guy could get called up right now at age 20. He can steal 70 bases a year all the way until he's 40. And he still will be short of Ricky Henderson. <laughs> I mean that is that is a crazy stat, right? I mean that is that is literally like if you look at today's game, it's incredible. Is unbreakable. That that might be like fifty six game hit streak, and Ricky Henderson stolen bases. That might yeah, that might be it. Obviously, Cy Young wins because they'll never get to five hundred. How many wins that is right. or whatever? But yeah, I think Ricky <clears throat> Henderson is incredible. The Ricky Henderson right. stats are are off the charts. I should look those up as we're talking. <laughs> and so. I, I'm not saying that we need to get rid of all the home runs, but I think we need we need more balls in play. That's the biggest thing. I agree. And and we also, you know, there there are some grapes I have with bullpens and the way things are handled now, and um, and maybe we can get into a little bit of that when we get to baseball's unwritten rules. But it, the sport, the sport itself, like I don't I don't think it's broken. But what you're losing, right, and what, what what the great part of the game, I think, was, was there are so many people who are, like, you can, between pitches, talk about the strategy, right? Like, do you move a runner here? Do you do this? Do you do that? And all of that is gone right now because so much of the scoring is just hit the ball over the fence. Completely agree. It's a, it's It's been a hard watch, and maybe that's partly because the Twins stink a little bit, but it's been a hard watch this year. It really has, and... um yeah, that maybe we've hit on something of that. We're definitely going to get into the baseball and written rules, but I'm I'm glad that we're at least kind of getting ourselves into that conversation. And it was good to see like folks like Theo Epstein, who I think is maybe partly to blame for some of this, having that conversation as well, uh, and at least a- acknowledging, like if you watch baseball, and I did this during the lockdown. I don't know if you did. Uh, I watched old baseball games on YouTube a lot. I just did. Yeah, ESPN would show some, and uh, FSN was doing some of that up here. The pace was not even close to the same. Like, it's a totally different game. 
and it's and it's way more interesting. Way more interesting. Some of that might be the old ballparks too. I don't know. Maybe I just thought old bar, all the old ballparks are just better than the new ballparks. I don't know. Well, I think I think the ballpark is an interesting discussion because I mean, if you even remember, right when they built the new um, stadium in Detroit, which is not all that new now, right? It's probably yeah. like twenty years old. Sure. <clears throat> but when they built it, it, it was big. Yeah. Um, you know the the. The dimensions were big. And then after like three, four years, they moved the fences in, right? All of a sudden, they took the bullpens and stuck them in the outfield and moved the fences in 20 feet all the way around. <laughs> and like we've lost some of that charm too. I mean, and maybe that's part of what needs to happen. Maybe the fences all need to go back. Yeah. And and in doing that, you, you end up with – you're less likely to try to hit home runs because it's more difficult and you have more doubles and triples then because balls are, you mean the outfields are much bigger. I don't know. It's a, uh, but, it, but I think the stadiums do have a, 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 a role in all of this. Yeah. I guess I want more quirk in my stadiums. I guess that's kind of the fun part. We'll talk about that. I think when we get, yeah, you're right. Let's do, we'll do a baseball segment when we get to there, let's keep it going. But by the way, just a quick, um, quick aside, since you brought up Ricky Henderson, uh, Ricky Henderson in 1982 stole 130 bases that year. Yeah, it's incredible. He stole 100 in 1980, 130 in 82, 108 in 1983. So that's ridiculous. We have um, a basically it's a it's like it's like stratomatic baseball. It was called Status Pro. Yeah. Um, which is another version, you know, same type of game. And my brother and I used to play it a ton when we were younger. And so we had the 1984 version, which in 83, you, you said he stole 108 bases. So when he singled, the card literally said, like, automatic steal of second, automatic steal of third. <laughs> like, he can't be thrown out. <laughs> That is so incredible. <laughs> when you figure he only had 150 hits, 108 steals on 150 hits. Yeah. I, did. I mean, he and, did walk 103 and, times, in fairness to him. So, yeah, he had 150 right. hits, walked 103 times. That's Man, that's incredible. That Man, that's I could talk yeah. about Ricky Henderson. All, that's fantastic. Those numbers are off the charts. I hadn't even really noticed. I knew he stole a lot because guys in the 80s stole a lot of bases, but – 130 is unfathomable. Right, right. I mean, and there's I – mean, he did it for years. I mean, even – so we're talking about him stealing all those bases in the early 80s. In – I think it was like 98, he still stole 66. I think you're right. Which is crazy too. I mean, for that time of – at 39 years old. Yeah, 66. You're absolutely right. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I love Ricky Henderson. All right. We'll shift out of this. We'll go back to baseball in a little bit. But I got to ask you about this one, too. Naomi Osaka this week for the French Open decided that she is not going to do any press conferences at all during the duration of her run. Uh, press conferences have been kind of mandatory in sports. She says, ah, you can send, you can find me, kick the fine to this charity. That's all I care about. Blah, 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 blah. She's sitting out. And I'm of two minds of this. I don't know where you are. I'm curious to think. But my mind is, I do want you to speak. At the same time, the questions so are get so stupid that I guess if you don't want to sit down and take stupid questions, I can't get upset about that. Uh, I, I don't know. Like, I guess I'm of two minds. I feel like you should talk to the press. But, but I get the same time, I'm not bothered by this. You? Yeah, so... The, the interesting thing will be is they've apparently in the rules, it says like, if you refuse to show up to the press, like we can say you're done. <laughs> um, and if that happens, um, then, then we'll really have a story, right? If they, if they say you're out of the tournament, like DQ would cause you didn't go to the press conference. Um, it'll be a big time story. That's huge. I, yeah. I am of the mind that you need to go to the press conference because 
if you're not going to press conferences, if you're not doing those things, um, right, it doesn't help grow your sport, right? If, if there's no press conference, you get less time on Sports Center at night. You're getting less time or, or space in the newspaper um, or on the websites, you know, if for those of us who don't <laughs> subscribe to the newspaper anymore. So, so I don't have a problem with them being required to do it, right? Like it's part of your job. Yep. That's, that's part of what you're getting paid for is to help grow, um, help grow the sport. But I do agree with what you're saying. Like, you know, some of the questioning has gotten stupid. Um, and you can see like, they've done little montages on like YouTube and stuff where like, here are the questions that the guys are asked. Here are the questions that the girls are asked. And right. You know, like the girls are getting all these questions about their, their fashion, their, wardrobe for the game or the match or whatever. <laughs> and so some of that stuff is dumb. Um, and, and I think that's where you can have the conversation, but that's not what she's saying. She said it's be- it's a mental health issue. So yeah. that what must is be, the mental that she, health? That, but it isn't because I think she thinks those questions are, are personal. Maybe they think they're, they're mean spirited. I mean, then, then she goes back to their stupid questions because they're mean spirited questions in her opinion. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I mean, maybe she just takes the uh, Marshawn Lynch approach. Yeah, I'm just here so I won't get fined. Right, yeah, I'm here so you don't kick me out of the tournament. That that would be sweet if she sits there for five minutes and just says, you know, maybe does the Rashid Wallace, my favorite one, where he just went, hey, both teams played hard. Both teams played hard. Hey man, both right. teams played hard. You know, and just go with that for five minutes. And I, hey, what are you gonna do? I'm, I'm okay with that. I guess I, you know, I just it goes back to I watched a Justin Thomas press conference before the turn. Right, be, right, Tiger Woods gets into the car accident, and Justin Thomas is in a press conference like 15 minutes after the news breaks, and Justin Thomas gets this news and he's shocked because this is like his friend and it's all this and he's just like oh my god and he's breaking down and a guy's like. So, Justin, the greens on this golf course, am I right? They're really – you know, it's like, what, what, what kind of stupid question is that? You know, and it, it, I just feel like I hear one to two to three uh, where I just question the integrity of the – like, who's giving these – who's giving space to these guys in the press conference room? I, I, I want to start to see some tougher credentials here. I don't <laughs> – I'm trying to think of the best way to put this. I don't blame the reporter – for trying to like get back to the golf side of things. Um, as much as I blame the guy who goes the opposite direction, right? Like when there's golf stuff to talk about and then they're, you know, going to the tabloid stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> that, that would bug me a little bit. Yeah. So I, I, you know, it, We'll see what happens the rest of the week, right? Because she won. It's a fascinating She's still story. Alive. I want to. I'm yeah. We're gonna follow this all the way. And wouldn't it be weird if they just got if, she, if she's a good player, by the way? This is not just some. This is not a scrub tennis player that's gonna go bow out in round two or three of this tournament. She's gonna make a deep run potentially. She's a very good player. Uh, and what if she gets to the finals and all of a sudden that's it? The the folks at Roland Garros said, well. You're not talking to the press, you're out. And they call it before the championship. Wouldn't that be, I mean, it would be the scandal of the year, wouldn't it? This is a story worth watching. Right, and at what point do they give her the boot? If they you know? give her the boot, it will be, I'd be interested to see what the rest of the sport does. I wonder if that's when the ladies band together and say like, all right, well then I'm not playing. And then I'm not playing. And then I'm not playing. And now all of a sudden you don't have a French Open. Like I think there, there, and there might even be some behind the scenes stuff at this point where it's a bit of a power struggle, and you just wonder if, uh, you know, some strong, strong, strong women at the top are like, don't you dare, don't even think about it. I this story would be so incredibly juicy if it gets to that place. Fascinating stuff. Yeah, no, I, I it's, and that, and that's like we said, like okay, so if you don't if you don't kick her out after the first and the second, like how many do you let her win? Yeah. Before you try to put your foot down. It's just, it's gonna, 
they've put themselves in a difficult spot. Yeah, the the tournament has because the tournament. I don't think unless you were going to stop her before the first round. I think now it's too late. Now you got to let her run the whole way because it's she telegraphed her move. It's not like she's just now putting this on you. She said it before it started. She made it very clear. You had all this time to do something about it, and you haven't done it. Well, and now to, um, you know, it, it just yeah. She she said what she's going to do, and if you kick her out now, or in a, or in two or three or four games, <clears throat> right? It just it's just going to only snowball. Yep. It only gets worse if you make that decision now. So as a coach, I get it that it's at a smaller scale. Necessarily, you're not Naomi Osaka here. No ripping on you, by the way. But are you a fan of? Because you do some local TV. You know, if a local local news reporter, local TV person picks you up for a softball game or something afterward, are there times though where you're like, God, I don't want to do this. Do I have to? Can I say no? Or are you always like, Nope, brand, 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 grow, grow, grow. I have to talk no matter what. So I, I will tell you, we, the, the stations that do our games, um, do not do a ton of coach interviews after a softball game. Um, and, you know, like they do, like in football, you usually get that coach interview going to halftime or you get a post game interview or two. Um, I, I don't know if I've ever done one after a game and there are times where I've wished we could. Um, yeah. in both, in both wins and losses, you know, um, the opportunity to talk a little more. Um, and like you said, like, just try to sell a little bit just because it, it is so much part of now coaching high school athletics. Like you're, you're recruiting your own kids. You're trying to keep kids out. You're trying to keep your youth program going. Um, I think it makes a difference. So I, I would welcome it. Like I, I like doing it. Um, uh, but I guess we don't really have the opportunity as much. Right. I, I would, I would, you know, I do, I, I can see where, where the coaches get upset when they're doing the, you know, the, during the timeout interview in basketball games that we see <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, between innings um, might get me a little on edge. Are you saying you but, won't do an in-game dugout interview for your local TV. They won't put the headset down there for you. And, uh, I will, I will, I will, I will wear a live mic for the full game if they want me to, as long as they have the dumb button ready. <laughs> or they could do it like in post edit. I could see that like, and this is what, uh, coach Neenaber said in between the second and the third inning. Let's go back and take a look at that after a guy in the truck has edited it down. Uh, very, I mean, yeah, I, I live mics during games would scare the hell out of me. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Yeah, no, we, we do we go live. I mean, our 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 games air live. Yeah, so do um, I. the games I call. Yes, I, that's it's been a little scary adjustment. Like, oh crap, these games are happening in real time. Yeah. I gotta be, I gotta so, be. Honest. So I could I could see you know wearing the mic and then them being able to cut it up afterwards. Like I'd be fine with that. Um, but like I said, I I, I may work blue a little a little more <laughs> often than I should. <laughs> um, and, and never really like in a negative way, but just in a. Um, I don't even know how to explain it. Like a ca- the casual, you know, inappropriate words sometimes um, just kind of strikes the right chord or loosens things up a little bit. Or right. I, I don't know how to explain it. Um, That's interesting know. to me that that because I mean you you speak the language of the educator, and I feel like you're always on, right? You know, you always have to kind of be on with the language, but yet you're coaching, and I feel this way. I mean, I coach speech, and I've coached other things, but. I do feel like after it's like after school when you coach, it's a different relationship. It's a different mentality. It's a different everything that kind of goes into it, right? So like you have to keep it. You 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 have to have two different alter egos almost, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't. It's it's not like you're you're swearing at your players or um, anything like that, you know. But like when you when you go out and uh, and you're having a huddle and you know. It's, let's, let's hit the shit out of the ball or whatever. Like it, I don't know. It's just weird. Like, and it's, it's not really planned. Um, but I mean, let's be honest here. Like the kids, it's not the first time the kids have heard the word. <laughs> the kids are not all clutching their pearls after you swear. They're not all grabbing their, their crosses around their necks and going, Oh, 
blasphemy. Right. Yeah. Right. Although, although I, I was informed. So we do have a, we have a kid, a seventh grader from a private school in town Uh-oh. on our team. Yeah. On our JV team. Keep it clean. And the, the girls will, they have a couple of different things that they say and they don't, they don't actually like say the words. They'll just say the initials. Um, and they have apparently said the initials in the huddle and the, the seventh grader asked what, what they oh, what that meant. Oh no. no. <laughs> and no, but they give her, they give her a clean version. Oh, good. Okay. So good. One, one of my other JV kids came from the same private school as a middle schooler. And now, you know, as an 11th grader. <laughs> and so she gives her the clean version of everything. That's nice. See, now that's yeah. looking out though for a kid. I love that. I love that. It's easy to root for that. That's great. Yeah. I hope that that is it. Was it? I mean, foobar. I mean, what are they giving her? I, I I would hate to see what the. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about over there, but I'd love to hear it one day. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Hey, you know what? Uh, we sh- so we're gonna keep an eye on that. So that's just to conclude that story. We're gonna watch that one closely. Yes, that's right. Zach and I are watching women's tennis all week long. I'm in on the major championships, so that's going to be good. And women's golf this week. So go women's sports. We're getting plenty of love here on my podcast. I want to support you. Uh, That's how I feel about it. Let's make it happen. Uh, Let's talk baseball's unwritten rules. Another story that popped up this week. Our twins were involved in it. Well, I don't know if they're your twins. I know there are twins, right? The the twins were involved in it. They're getting the hell beat out of them by the White Sox. La Russa is about as old school as it gets. And we're up – I mean, the, the Sox are just killing us. They're up 16-4. to four. We decide for the 80th time to bring in Will and Zostadio to throw 45-mile-an-hour fastballs, which is – I mean, it was fun the first time. Now it's just kind of a disgrace uh, that we actually have to go to him that often. Um, uh, he serves up a 3-0 soap bubble, and the kid takes it over the fence, and it's whatever. And – and the twins are, are have the audacity to be mad at that, and then we start bringing in the unwritten rules conversation. Larusa's upset. Larusa hates the idea that he swung three zero, and again, I guess I'm of two minds, and I want to hear what your opinion is. My opinion is the only thing I'm mad about is that he he swung three zero when there was a take sign. If the manager tells you to take, you take. Like that's my rule. But the Twins have no right to be upset down 15-4 to four when you're bringing in the third-string catcher to pitch. Am I wrong? You are not wrong. Um, I, you know, I, I will say this. I am okay if you get a little offended if someone's swinging 3-0 on you when they're up a bunch. I am okay if you, you know, want to throw one behind someone's back. Because that stuff all will police itself out. But my, my problem is is getting offended by all that when you have a guy on the mound throwing 45 miles an hour. Right? Like, you turned it into a circus first. Correct. You know, you... You know, and that's right. I've, I've seen people talk about, like, oh, it's, it's a mockery or whatever. Like, yes, putting a guy out there who throws 45 miles an hour on the rubber for the third or fourth time this year is a joke, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's where I have a trouble with it. Um, you know, if you want to get offended by, you know, somebody swinging three Oh, and you're up a bunch, like that's fine. You can get offended by it. Like whatever, whatever's going to motivate you, whatever's going to get your team going great. You know, if that's what it takes to get you going, fine, be offended. But I think you lose the right when you do that first. I completely agree. You know, and that and that's, you know, like the whole thing with, with guys throwing at each other and stuff, like it, it it all takes care of itself, right? Like guys aren't throwing at each other's heads. If you're throwing, you know, and they're throwing them behind their waist and stuff, like I get why people don't like it, but I understand why it's a part of the game. And why it's been there for a long time. Now, obviously, Larusa doesn't help himself when he's when he tells everyone, like, "Yeah, I'm fine with guys throwing at my players." Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, but I, I also understand where he's like, "Yeah, that's that's part of it." And you know what? If you're gonna swing three zero and you're gonna get a ball thrown at you once or twice a year and you're cool with that, then by all means, go for it. Right. Exactly. You know, same thing. Like, I, I don't care if guys hit 
hit a ball two miles. You know, like we saw Tatis do it the other night. Um, right, he tied up that game in the ninth, and he stood and watched it, and then stutter stepped around the bases, and it was quite the elaborate show. Yep. <clears throat> and I'm of the same mind. Like that doesn't bother me, but if you are bothered by it and you throw one at him next time, then that's your prerogative too. Right. Like, you know, it's, and it'll all sort itself out. Right. And then he can make that decision. Is it worth it for me to skip around the bases? If I'm going to get one, you know, in the butt cheek once a week, it, you know, I, that stuff doesn't bother me. I, I, but it's just the, the whole fiasco with the twins and everyone, you know, and Smalley being upset and, Dick Bremer being upset, like, you know, those guys got to get off their high horses. I completely agree. And I, I, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's far more embarrassing to watch La Tortuga out there pitching. Like when we have four available arms in the bullpen, but then you, but Rocco has to say, nah, we need all these arms. Cause I make 70 pitching changes a night. I'm needing everybody in the, in the bullpen. It's like, well, you did that. Like you put yourself in that position. Like, well, and this this is the, this is the weird thing about baseball this year. Like, so they they expanded the rosters to twenty six players. Yep. Right. I think they should and, shrink them. And yet we still have position players pitching, and I, I pulled up the stat. Like it's happening a it's, lot. It's forty percent more common this year than it's ever been in the past. <clears throat> so why why are teams having this issue? Like to me, that's a that's a managing issue. That's a an issue with your GM in terms of roster building. And this is one of the big differences. Back in the day, and I may, I may date myself a little bit here. Me too. We're in on it. <clears throat> but like you know, Earl Earl Weaver wrote a a pretty good book. Earl Weaver on managing and. Or on strategy, I can't remember the official name of it. You own it. But it's in your library. It is in my library. Um, and it's actually one of the, my favorite ones um, that I own because it, it's very ahead of its time, right? I mean, it, Earl Weaver on strategy is the name of it. Um, but it's, it's, it's ahead of its time. But one of the things he always talks about is, like, he always had the young, maybe, maybe it's a rookie or second-year guy starter, who wasn't quite ready to start yet for him, that guy was in the bullpen. Right. If the game ever got out of hand, they went to that guy, and that guy threw four or five innings in a game. Yep. And it was just like getting ready to, to be a starter. <clears throat> and the fact that teams can't do that anymore, the fact that they, you know, we have 26 roster spots, and we're burning, you know, what I mean, some, some teams are burning 14 guys on pitchers. Yeah, it's unacceptable. Like you need nine relief pitchers. I, I don't know. It just it baffles me. It it really does. It, it 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 continues to frustrate me when I watch baseball games just because I you know, even gone are the days like I can remember as, you know, again, I'm dating myself, watching, you know, when Jack Morris pitched for the twins is one year that he did and we won the World Series. There was a day or two I do recall where Jack didn't have it. And Tom Kelly was like I need you to eat some innings. So he went out and he got shelled. Like he gave up seven, eight, nine runs. And he had to go out there and pitch five, six. Like that happens sometimes, right? And that used to be what it was. It's like, it's your day in the rotation. We got guys that need to sit. You need to go out there and eat some innings. And yeah. starters would just go out there and do that. Like they, And now it's like you, you, a starter can't even wiggle out of a jam now without uh, the long man getting up or without the second guy getting up. And it's like... Let a pitcher work through this sometimes. They, they won't let him throw, you know, through the fifth, the sixth. And that's – so that, this is the weird thing. Minnesota fans complain about Rocco going to the bullpen all the time. All yep. the time. Yep. And when you pull up the stats, it showed, like, Minnesota's starters actually throw, like, the third longest out of anyone on average. Like so, so it's the whole game that's done that. It's changed that. Yeah, yeah. It's not just Rocco, you know. And and you know, people are gonna love, you know. The 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 Twins fans will look at Larusa and say like, 
Well, Larusa's 74, he's old school or whatever, and yet look at them. They're winning. The, his team doesn't even like him, and they're winning. Yeah. And it's well, he's doing it the old way. That was I, I got into it with a guy the other day. He's like, well, they're winning in spite of him. He, he goes, on. Oh, they won the division last year. I'm like, uh, they finished third last year, right? They were only they were like a game or two out, but they finished third in the division last year. They didn't win it, and they're winning with, you know, he doesn't have his best players. Yeah, it's like they're they're not. The guy knows something about managing, right? He's been around for a while. He's won in Oakland. He's won in St. Louis. You know, and you can say what you want about him. And and his comment, too, right, with Lance Lynn, like, Lance has got a locker. I've got an office. It's the best line ever. Yeah. No, I loved it. And, and you know, you, obviously we've got some opinions on Lance Lynn because he came here for a year and just mailed it in. Yeah, he was terrible here. Hor- horrible. Well, and he didn't want to be here. And, and that's, that's the one – People talk about all the time about like, oh, you know, you should get these guys on one-year deals and overpay. That's the disadvantage of the one-year deal. Like the guy doesn't want to be there. He's upset that he's not getting paid as much as he thinks he should. You know, he didn't get that deal. He mailed it in for that year. Yeah. I know you think you're getting like this highly motivated guy, and sometimes maybe you are. Maybe you are getting a Trevor Bauer who's looking for a big payoff and wants to do it, you know, whatever. But sometimes you're getting a jaded, pissed off, overweight guy, and that's what you get too. Like, and you know, a free ten million dollars to get dealt at the deadline sounds like a good deal to me. You know, especially if he can get dealt to a winner. That's that was probably right. an ideal thing for Lance Lynn. I like Larusa a lot. I'm rooting for him, and everybody gets on him because like, oh, he doesn't know the extra inning rule, or he didn't know this rule. It's like. Well, that rule's stupid. It's a stupid rule anyway, and it just it happened six minutes ago. Forgive everybody for not remembering the rule that happened six minutes ago that we just right. came up with. Right. It, it, the rule that he missed out on was, like, if you go into extra innings, you don't have to put your pitcher on second base. Well, you know, and again, I'm like, well, the guy they would have put out there wasn't – like, he was a great base runner either. And I don't know. It's just people. People like to bitch to bitch, you yeah. know. And then there, I saw you know someone was upset because they had a. They used to have like a little a little concession stand area that was named after a woman who yeah, I saw that worked the concessions for many years, and they they changed it from. I don't, I don't remember her name. You know, forgive me, but they changed it from Laura's Lounge to Larusa's Lounge, right? And then everybody's bitching about Larusa, you know. Pretty sure he doesn't have a say on what they name the concession stands. <laughs> you know, like he's not involved in that decision. He wasn't the one who chose. It's not like it was in his contract. All right, I'll be the manager, but on one condition. <laughs> one condition: you name a concession stand after me. You know, like that's the stuff that just. You know, he went to Target Field. He saw Senior Smokes Nacho Stand, and he was like, "Hang on a minute now. If Juan Berenguer can sell nachos out of a helmet, I better get a goddamn lounge around here." <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's while we're on this baseball stuff here, and I know um, you you opened some some cards the other day. I did, yeah. You know, kind of, kind of diverging here a little bit off script, but um, how did that go for you? I'm still opening some because I've decided I want to do it like slowly. I want to do it like in a therapeutic way. You know what's what's been nice is I first of all I love reading. I love just seeing names of guys I watched when I was younger. Yep. There's that nice feeling of like like that time capsule, that moment because in you, time. What, what year was it you were opening? Again? Ninety-two. 92, 92 upper deck. Okay. 92 upper deck. So I found the Pedro Martinez rookie card. Uh, that was pretty cool. That's I've seen a lot of doubles, right? Here's the yep. thing about cards that I forgot about. I have I, I opening this this pack, I opened it up and there's back to back Bip Roberts cards. And I'm sitting there going Whoever makes these cards to put two Bip Roberts in the same pack back to back? What the hell are we doing? Where's our quality control guy? Where's our guy to say we can't put two of the same guy back to back at a card pack? Come on. So I I have 
a, a bunch of retro packs. Like if I find them somewhere, I'll buy one. Um, and I just started collecting them and I'm not sure when or how I'm going to open them all. But like, I, I just, at this point, I'm just amassing them. I love um, it. I thought, you know, maybe on one year right for my birthday, like I'm just going to crack them all open or, um, I, I did a I did a deal last year where I was open to trading people and I I kind of put out a list on Twitter of uh, on my card Twitter of like here are some years and sets like I'm interested in and players I'm interested in and I said like and I posted a bunch of random cards I had that are current and I said I will trade you any of my cards for anything from yours I'm like but don't tell me what's in it just send it to me in an envelope and I'm gonna and I for the month of November and December, I did this and I put them all in my Christmas stocking. Oh, and then on Christmas day, I opened them all up. So that was kind of fun. That is fun. Um, to get a bunch of stuff. So I've, I've been amassing some older packs and, um, I think I told you earlier today, I purchased, uh, some Trent Palmer cards. Yeah. Super shout out to Trent Palmer. Uh, you a know, kid, a former student of mine, former teammate of yours. Yeah. Uh, can we, can we call him a close personal friend of the show? Well, I, I sent a message out to Trent. I know he's busy playing ball right now, but uh, I, I if Trent ever gets a free moment and wants to come on the pod, uh, I would love to chat minor league baseball and the, the path to the big leagues for Trent Palmer. I'd love to chat with him. So Trent's my guy. Yeah. And so that, that was kind of fun, right? Like seeing guys that you've played with, coached, taught, whatever, you know. <laughs> um be on a baseball card. So I, I picked up some of those today. They're in the mail now on the way here. Um, but it's been fun. Like I've, I've got a handful of packs too of current stuff that I haven't opened yet. I definitely have, have toned it down in the last six months. Cause it's got so hot. You had to get your hand off the burner. <laughs> it, it has gotten hot. It also, um, I, you know, I, I was uh, part of it, right. With the cost of everything was going up. Um, but also I was really, you know, I was finishing, you know, finishing school and wanting to make sure I didn't take out a loan for that. Right. So all my money was going into that. Right. Um, but I, I've started to pick up a little bit here now again, the last couple of weeks I've started looking again and, um, over the summer it'll be nice. Like I don't have as many, uh, as many commitments. So I'm able to do a little more and travel a little more and go to, some card shows and things like that, which thank God those are happening again. No kidding. Yeah, I, I I bumped into this set at a flea market. I was just walking around. My gal likes to go to these things, and, and I do too because you never know what you're going to find sometimes. And uh, we just walked, and I saw this thing, and it was like it was, yeah, 15, 20 bucks for this sealed, unopened. And I was just – a little part of me just said it's probably not worth anything, and who cares? But there's just something yep. about – I, I, I think it was just I, – I don't know. I guess we I, – I don't know if it's just a midlife crisis thing coming up on, but I just felt like I want to open some cards. And, yeah, it has been fun. You know, it's been fun just I, – like I, I don't think I've come across anything worth anything, but it, it's been <laughs> but cool. The, but that's that's where it is fun, right? Like you can, you can open up stuff and reminisce and see guys that you used to know. And, right, like guys that – that are basically forgotten by general yeah. baseball fans right now. But you pull those guys up and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember, you know, uh, Lenny Webster and the backup catcher for the Twins. You know, I, oh, yeah. it, it's kind of fun to, to reminisce a little bit and, and not have to chase, right? I mean, that's the thing right now. So many guys are chasing stuff. They're ripping it and they're immediately putting it for sale. And I just, I don't, that's, that's a tough way to make an easy living. It really is. Uh, and I'm not trying to, and, and my, you know, Bob who listens to the program, good friend of mine, he's been making hay. I mean, he's been buying and selling cause he had cards for years, obviously. So he's just going through his collection and just moving on yep. what he, you know, moving on what's, what's hot. You know, he moved Kobe for a grand or something like that. And, you know, he was been able to move some stuff, which is pretty cool. But, you know, I don't know, I guess. There's that I it, there's that line of acquiring and moving and and trying to maximize your dollar and how much of it you want to keep for yourself and I I don't know I don't I don't know if I ever want to get that intense into it I I know that I want to just rip some packs every now and again and 
you know, talk about the guys that were that were pulling up out of there, like Pedro Munoz, uh, one of my friend's favorite twins of all time. It was like, when are you ever going to spend five minutes talking about Pedro Munoz? That was pretty dope. When, when I started, you know, really getting back into it last year, like as basically as the COVID stuff hit, um, I would I would always buy one or two more packs than I was going to open. <clears throat> and I just stuffed them in a box, kind of thinking like, hey, maybe, you know, I'm just going to keep building this box and we'll see what happens in 10 years. Like I'll open them all up or something. And when everything exploded, I ended up selling most of it. Um, and it funded like the money that I initially put into it, I put – back into my bank account, but this, the profit I put into a either a, into my trip to Vegas or B I've started a fund, you know, to take the, the kids to Disney world here. Um, and I was like, you know what? That's probably way better money spent than hanging onto these cards for a while. Absolutely. <clears throat> so I haven't gotten like aggressive into the flipping stuff. I have flipped a few things here and there, but nothing for like mega profit. Um, mostly like, I know I have a, a group on online of guys who sell cards and buy cards and mostly just selling to guys who couldn't find things and like, Hey, rather than you guys paying like three times the markup, like just give me five bucks extra and I'll put that in my Vegas fund or my Disney fund. Um, but it's, it's been fun. Like, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people online now who are talking about it. Um, right. We were all kids who grew up in that junk wax era where cards weren't worth anything. Um, but we're able now to go and attack, you know, things that line up. Like we can, we can, we have money now. We have disposable income. Yeah. In theory. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah, you know, yeah, in theory. No, yeah, but no, you're right. Absolutely. You have the ability to plunk down, you know, you know, I spent twenty on this set, but they they were brand new sets that were two hundred and fifty dollars that they were selling because they were trying right. to they they were trying to take advantage of it. And you know, and if I wanted to, it was there and I could have had it. And who knows what was in those cards, those card packs? Yeah, yeah, I mean, and that's I mean, part of right a little bit of the gamble. That is the gamble, right? And so I didn't want to gamble that far, I guess. But maybe down the road I will. By the way, just a quick. Th- uh, since this little pardon the interruption type podcast that we're doing here is continuing to move, let me give just you're out of your mind. The Disney World, oh heavens to Murgatroyd! You got four kids, oh you're gonna come back with no hair. Well, we're we're talking about you know my brother has two little ones as well. Oh my God, six kids at, at Disney World, Jesus Christ! <laughs> and so, well, and my mom and dad have started you know talking about it and. I, I, I don't even remember. We talked about when we're going to do it in a couple of years. You know, so we're down the road, right? Like, yep. I mean, my little ones are almost one and almost two. <laughs> and my brothers are almost three and almost one. So, and, and but I, I will say this, right? Like, I have two older ones, too. Yep. And uh, Oh, they'd love it. Yeah, for sure. Well, well, that's the thing, too. My daughter right now is like, I, I don't want I don't want to go to Disney World. I don't want to. And I, and I told her, I'm like, listen. When I was a junior, in actually I was a senior in college, my dad <clears throat> won a trip for four, all expenses paid to Disney World. Wow! Um, from he was working with Coca Cola, and he built the best Easter display in the Midwest, apparently. And so we went down there for five days, and I'm like, it was a great vacation, right? Like. And you wouldn't think like I would be like, hey, let's go on the E.T. ride or, you know, (laughs) but we had a blast. Yeah. And I'm like, you'll have fun, too. And I said, worst case, you're going to Florida for a week and you can sit in the sun. And when you say that to a teenage girl, she's in. So that's that's an easy way to to win her right back in there. No question about it. Uh, I I just every time I think of like the big family trip, you just get the vibe of like, Man, there were episodes of like Full House, I think, that went there. You know, it's like uh, you know how these end. It's uh, everything oh, yeah. that can go wrong can't. You know, will probably. Uh, uh, but you know, well, I we we on. did one when I was in seventh grade. We did it with my dad's side of the family, so we went down with, you know, my family, my my aunt and uncle and their three kids, and we and my grandma and grandpa. We rented like a condo. We all stayed together. It was a little bit of uh, 
<laughs> of you know sitcom when we went to the water park and my dad locked his keys in the car. You know, and the backups are back in Minnesota. Of course. Uh, but yeah, it you know it it went well, and I think I think for my parents more than anything, like my I think my parents really want to do it. Oh yeah, they're at that. You know? Get all the grandkids in like one spot at one time. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Well, I, I think that's part of the motivation. They they are closing on a cabin here in the next couple of weeks, hey, and I think that's part of it too. There you go. Co- they they have got some covert operations they are trying to launch here. They want some. Uh, they want to create some motivation for grandkid time, and uh, you know, wheel themselves back into that. I don't blame them for that. I guess that's probably. The I, way I, I think we're gonna have a. We might have to have a golf pod from the. Uh, from the cabin one night. Oh boy! Before, I, before we go hit the links up there, I'm in. I'm 100 percent in. Uh, you know, it's uh, it, it, the as the, the golf pod's taken off. Ty and I are having a lot of fun doing it. And yeah, if I could do a remote golf pod with you, bring you in on that. Oh gosh, what an unbelievable uh, pod that would be. We talked Brooks Kepka and Deshambo on the golf pod this week. Did you get a chance to see the eye roll? How good was that? I did. I did. And then I saw it posted about 84 times on Twitter by <laughs> Tom Brady. And <laughs> I love that stuff. I want more of that in sports. I want, I want open disdain from athletes and I don't want them to have to apologize for it. I want to see more of that. That's what makes sports great is when we get some of that stuff. Well, the hard thing in golf is that right? Like you're really out there playing against the course. Yep. So having some of that like natural rivalry stuff is a little bit tougher. Um, but what, but when you get that right, like it's like perfect. Like if, if they don't put these guys in the same group in the next week or two, like they're missing out. 100%. Unless right? like, both I, guys just stand there and say, don't do it. But, but honestly, who, who's against this? Come on. I would, I would just tell them like, you don't get to decide, <laughs> right? And and I don't know. Like I, you can tell me when when they when they drop these these pairings. Is it? No, they're is it, made, they're made is it for supposed TV to be pairings. random, or are they just are they picking it? No, they're made for TV pairings. No question okay. about it. Like, and the PGA has made that clear. And I mean, there are some traditional pairings at the U.S. Open that they could do. Uh, you know, the U.S. Open oftentimes was like we're going to put the Masters, the Open, and the and the PGA champion together in a group, or we're going to put the yep. reigning U S senior U S amateur and U S open winner together in a group. They used to do that for years. That used to be a re- uh, thing, yep. but they had talked about like, Hey, you know what? Kepka won it three years ago. Uh, Woodland won it two years ago. DeShambo won it last year. Why don't we just put those three in a group together and like have Gary Woodland just be the third guy. It's like, dude, are you kidding me? I'd pay, I'd pay extra money to stream that. That's how good that would be. Yeah, and I, I think even you know, like even when you're talking to people, it'd be like, it, it's like that episode of The Office. Like you can't randomly, you can't choose who you're randomly drug testing. Okay, I randomly choose you. <laughs> like, like just just do it, right? Like just make it happen. Like there are some things that are are better for the sport, right? We talked earlier at the start about growing your sport. Well, here's one of the things you can do. I'm in on a hundred percent. Uh, we close, uh, we're, we're getting towards the one hour mark of this pod. I love it. We need to do more of these little potpourri pods. These are great. Uh, I love just, uh, yapping with you. A couple things though, as we go out, we haven't talked about this, not since draft night, May 31st, Aaron Rodgers is still on the roster. Is he still on the roster in September? I think he is. Does he retire I, I just, or does he play? I think he plays. He's, he's not going to sit out. Yeah. He's I don't too, believe he's, he's going to sit out. to not show up. Yeah, I don't believe he's going to sit out. And after the Kenny Main comments, uh, when he was interviewed with Kenny Main, and he said he loves his teammates, loves the city, pretty clear though he hates the general manager. I think he's overplaying his hand though here a little bit. Do you agree? He, he's enjoying himself in Hawaii right now. Oh my god, yeah. Although, Which, dude, I get the vibe him and Miles Teller don't make like. There's no way that's a hangout that he wants. Like, right? Uh, you don't think Miles Teller, the actor, wants to hang out with Aaron Rodgers? I, I don't know. Right. It just it's, doesn't feel like it's an like okay. Thing. Your your gal's friends with another gal, and you got to hang out with the spouse. Yeah, <laughs> Aaron's there. It's like, can you see Shailene going? 
So Miles is coming with his gal, and uh, he's like, "Do I know Miles? Yeah, you've seen uh, you've seen Whiplash, and you've seen all these terrible action films. Yeah, he's in that. Yeah, it's great. It's really good. You're gonna love it." And that yeah, first meeting is him. awkward. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, speaking of vacations, I know, I know, Ryan's off on vacation now, but I can't wait to. Uh, hear his opinions on Herb showing up on AEW tonight or the other night. Oh, was Herb on AEW? I missed it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. There, there's like a brawl in his office. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's it, it, it's great. Oh, it's so good. I'll, I'll, I'll tag you in some videos here on the Twitter. Oh, I love it. When is Tebow going to get in the ring then? Now that he's with the Jags and the cons run the Jags, when is Tebow? It's a matter of time before Tebow's in a wrestling storyline, right? I mean, would would Tebow play the uh, was it Friar Ferguson role? <laughs> he's built though. He's not like Friar Ferguson. He's he's built right now that he could he could go. I think. Well, he's tried everything else too, right? He's played baseball. He's played quarterback. He's trying tight end. Pro wrestling's got to be the next step for Tebow, right? Uh, Tebow and Gronk as a tag team. Oh, there we go. There we go. Rapid fire on the way out too. Does Tebow make the Jaguars? I think he does. I kind of agree. their, Their tight end room isn't good to begin with. And I think they're going to use them you know, Taysom Hill like where he lines up in the backfield twice a game and he might throw it, but he's probably just running it for a four yard gain. But, you know, Herb's also the kind of guy who's got to prove he's the smartest one in the room. Yeah. I think that's the big part is Herb doesn't want to be shown that he's wrong. Like he doesn't want to cut Tebow and have people give him a hard time for that. Yeah. For sure. Last one. Over under three and a half twins traded at the deadline or before the deadline. Um, what are we talking like guys on the major league roster? Guys on the major league roster, guys that started on opening day, not there. Three and a half. Uh, I think it'll be under that, but you're you're definitely gonna. I think you're definitely gonna see a couple. Yeah, um, I feel like you're gonna move. Why wouldn't you move Cruz if you could? If you're out of it. If you could unload Donaldson, I think you'd love to do that, right? Because that that isn't working. No. And if you could move Sano, have you seen enough of Sano? I would not move Sano. I just I don't. Kenta Maeda. I I would I would move I would move Donaldson if you could. Yeah, and his little list of cheaters. That's bananas. Yeah. Oh, that's almost a – man, we got almost got to go back to the unwritten rules conversation. We might have to put a pin in that one for next week. We might have to have – because that one might take 20 more minutes. That's yeah. bananas, though. Yeah, I saw that. So what is he I'm, doing? I'm fine with Donald. I mean, he, he needs something to do. He's never in the game. Yeah, he can't – he's not hitting. He's always hurt. Always hurt. <laughs> so, yeah, I – you know, the Donaldson, I, if you could move him, I think you got to – the crew stuff, I, you know, he's not going to hit forever, right? He's on a one-year deal. It it makes sense to move him. And then if he wants to come back again, he can. Yeah, for sure. Right? He hey, loves it here. Nelson, Nelson we're going to trade you for the last three months. If you're looking for something to do next year, like call us again. Yeah, we'll throw you, know, we'll throw you $17 million more. You can come back. Yeah, but I, they don't have like the – the cheap, effective bullpen guys that people are going to be looking for. Yeah. Um, they're not going to move. The, the problem with Sano, the problem that they have with Buxton, people are always talking about trading those guys because of injuries or other issues. You know, I mean, everybody wants to cut Sano because he strikes out. He does strike but out a lot. He does. But, like, what what do you think you're going to get for him? That's true. You're not going to turn around and get, like, two arms. Right. That, that's the that's the crazy thing is everybody talks about, like, oh, you got to trade him. You know, you got to trade him. But then, like, okay, what are you getting for him? And then they talk about a king's ransom. Like, you're, you're not getting that. No. You know, and that that's the problem. That is the problem with Buxton. Buxton is either tearing it up 
and you want to keep him, or he's getting hurt, and you're like, oh yeah, we got to trade him, and it's like, well, no, nobody's, nobody's going to give you what you think he's worth, right? Nobody's going to give you the value of him tearing it up because of those injuries, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I, everybody always wants to trade people, and they always got these like crazy deals, you know. It's the same thing, right? Like, just going back to the Aaron Rodgers stuff, right? Like the trades that are proposed, like on Twitter and stuff all the time. I'm like, it doesn't even fucking make sense, you know. None, none of those deals make sense for the teams involved. It's true. So I, I think I think you'll see one or two twins traded, um, especially like I'll be honest. This next week is make or break time for them. Yeah, they got to rattle right. off six, seven wins here. You know, they they went four and two over these last six with Baltimore and the Royals, and even that kind of felt like ah, they should have got more. Yeah, and so I, you know, if they if they don't rattle off some here, they play them seven more times here. If they don't, it's time to start moving because if you move now, you can get a lot more than if you wait another month and a half. That's true. And I know that that's not necessarily the message you want to send to your fans when you're allowed to get back to full capacity, but at the same time. Your AAA affiliate's just down the road. It's not a big deal. Like your guys, you're gonna see guys, and I think that's okay. Like I think you got to start selling some things. There's some young guys that you kind of want to watch. I think, you know, I don't know. Right, and and I'll I'll be honest. They're also gonna have the advantage of no one's been able to go for yeah two years, so they're really gonna want to go. It's novel. Yeah, it's novel to go see a game right now. Yep, I'm fascinated by it. There's. We're going to do this again. I love the sports potpourri pod here. We're going to have some uh, have some fun knocking down some different topics. We're going to brainstorm more for next week, and uh, and we'll have at it again for another hour and ten minutes. Zach, it's always so good to catch up with you, my friend. Sounds good. Awesome. I, I'm in for the potpourri. Lo- we love the potpourri. It smells nice in the pod room, and there's no doubt. The studio smells lovely with all that potpourri. It's so good. Uh, we'll keep track of that. Thanks for listening again. You can catch us wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, obviously at podbean.com. Uh, make sure you drop us a line, share it. You can send me an email, Tim, podcast1 at yahoo.com. Drop us on Facebook, whatever, Twitter. I'm at Tim Anderson Pod on Twitter, Mr. Tim Anderson on Instagram, Man vs. Game 1 for my buddy Zach if you want to fire at him and challenge him on anything I'm sure he'd be happy uh, to take your requests I know that the wild fans have been coming hard at him lately that's going to maybe be one for next week uh, he really angered the uh, the wild fans here in Minnesota but uh, it's going to be good to have that one go for uh, we'll, we'll give you a chance to defend yourself on that one hey Please. state of hockey tomorrow night I believe the Bruins play again <laughs> love that so much it's so good so it's and every time i throw it out there people bite they bite every time so i I gotta give you 20 full minutes on the pot or something just let you just go about uh all the state of hockey nonsense and the wild fans were on the brink of insufferable uh the other night but uh they they fell to the golden knights so that's the end of that nonsense so there we go and then the golden the golden knights got thumped tonight (laughs) yeah they're yeah, I, it's going to be delicious when the Knights lose because uh, then you you don't have to we don't have to hear any whining there. That'll be great. So on behalf of everybody here at the podcast, uh, all the folks who help us out, Zach, Brian, Ty, everybody who chimes in and gives us what they give us here on this podcast, I'm grateful for you. Thank you. Keep your head up, and we'll see you next time.